Hey everybody. So here we have this Cobalt 80 volt max lithium ion battery pack. So this was used to power a few different outdoor lawn and garden tools I have. Uh, for example my uh, 80 volt Cobalt weed eater. Also I got a uh, leaf blower. Those are two things I have. My parents actually have a few different things from them. Uh, including a lawnmower and stuff like that. So the reason why I got this open is I noticed this spring when I went to try to charge it, it actually caused the charger to blink red. And I figured, okay, maybe it got over this charge sitting. But today I tried it again and uh, it appeared like, like it was trying to take a charge. However, what was happening was the charger was blinking green as usual, like it's charging. However, the battery was not actually charging. The uh, indicator on the back of the pack, for example, normally when these are taking a charge, you know, they'll actually animate like one, two, three, one, two, three, etc. Um, this one was not doing it. It was just solid one bar and then eventually it started flashing like the pack was running down. So it wasn't actually taking a charge. But then I noticed. Um, just a little bit ago, I pulled it out and I smelled it, and it didn't have a burn. It did not have a burning smell to it, or not like that. But there was a chemical smell. I'm suspecting one of these 20 18650 cells has vented, uh, not violently, obviously, but leaked electrolyte. Now, um, the way that I can best describe it was now you couldn't really actually smell it in the room. But you could just, if you held the pack up toward your nose, you would smell like a chemical sweet or tangy chemical smell. And what I did is I took this apart and I should note, um, do not take one of these apart unless you know what you're doing. For one, it's a lithium ion battery pack. And number two, um, this is a high voltage battery pack. It currently has about 70 volts on it. And that's enough to actually kill you. It's DC. It's a um, high current pack. You do not want to mess around with one of these if you don't know what you're doing. So, the smell seems to be concentrated in here. And I'm thinking it might be this cell right there. And it's hard to see it. But um, I do think it leaked a little bit of electrolyte. Now, the thing is, the pack, when you measure up here at these terminals, it still has 70 volts. And this is a 1S, excuse me, 1P, one parallel, 20S battery pack. There's 20 cells in series. That's where you get the 80 volts. It's literally 4 times 20 to get 80. And all it takes is for one cell to go bad to render the whole pack bad. And you can see all these wires in here that connect to every junction in this pack for balance charging as well as monitoring and probably what happened is this cell might have went bad or what have you and the thing is since there's so many cells in series in this pack you could have a case where one cell could get over discharged and worst case reverse charged um, like I mean, like I say, you got 19 other cells in there that could be full, and you could have one that goes bad, and it's like there you go. Now, of course, these cells, they're probably in INR chemistry, so it's a safer chemistry. So IMR or INR chemistry, I'm leading possibly toward IMR. It might say on the pack, I don't know, but it says Made in China, of course. So, um, and also this pack is from 2017, so it's. Uh, it's seven years old, so it's definitely uh, lived out its lifespan, I would say. The other pack here is doing just fine, and let's see what the date on it is. Same date, uh, 4 19 2017. Again, this one works fine. Uh, this one, however, yeah, not, not so good. I think I noticed last year, uh, one time I went to charge it, it would cause the charger to flash red, but then it would work. And uh, it's just a telltale sign of one of these batteries going bad. Okay, everybody. So, I decided to go ahead and tear down this pack. 
Um, I was a bit skeptical at first due to the fact that this is an 80 volt pack. It's a high voltage pack. And with these, you have to exercise extreme caution working inside of because they have high enough voltage that could kill you. Um, it's kind of like, think of, a, think of, for example, 120 volt wall receptacle. That can, unfortunately, kill you. So, what I did was I carefully peeled back the plastic covers on the sides and then began removing nickel strip from the edges of the cells that were connecting the cells together. So this is 20 18650 cells in series um, and that's how they get the 80 volt max. So you think 4 volts per cell. It's kind of like how DeWalt and Craftsman and other brands come up with the 20 volts on their packs. It's either 5 cells in series or um, 2 sets of 5 cells in series in a um, 5S 2P configuration. So the thing was, when I was tearing this apart, I had to use extreme caution to make sure I was not bridging across any cells, for example, any cells that were still connected within the pack, because you could actually cause a bridge, and that would not be good. Once the cells were isolated, it was a lot easier, because I knew which cells were not connected, and I could safely um, touch from cell to cell and not cause a short circuit. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but anyways, I did that and also, and at the same time, removed the little balance connections from each junction in this pack. And of course, there was a whole bunch of them. I'd already disposed of the wires and uh, sucked up all of the uh, nickel strip pieces. Made sure this was good and clean before I did this part of the video. And we did, in fact, have one cell vent in this pack. I want you to look carefully. It's right near the BMS board. You can see, for example, how these little insulator discs are nice and dry. That one's soaking wet. And that's where you can have that's where you can smell the electrolyte smell. So thank God this thing did not vent with flame. It just um, vented peacefully. I don't know when it vented. Um, Honestly, I don't know if it had vented just now or if it had been vented for a while. Because, for example, when you look inside this uh, casing here, you can see residue from liquid electrolyte. So, this thing may have vented some time ago. There's no telling to be sure. So, what we're going to go ahead and do here on camera is I'm going to measure the voltage across these cells one by one. And I know this might take a bit of a moment. Um, please be patient. Again, we have 20 cells. I'm pretty sure we're going to find one or two that are not in balance with each other. So I measured a, I measured a few of them earlier, and I think they were like 3.8 volts. But let's see what we have now that every cell was isolated from each other. So I'm going to stick the multimeter where the camera can see it. Okay, there we are. Anyways, here we go. Now, of course, you're going to see some negative readings on here. That's because these things are like um, positive, 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 if you know what I mean. So, that being said, let's go ahead and start measuring them. So, about 3.74 on that one. 3.8 on that one. See, we have, some, we have a little bit of imbalance here. I'm going to be quiet for the rest of this and just measure them out until I find one that is way off balance.
Okay, here's the one that's vented. You can see, dead, nothing. Uh, 0 0.03 volts. So yeah, we had just one sale go bad. Um, there was a couple in there that were done that's a little bit low. We I think it was like 3.6 volts I measured on one. But most of them were roughly 3.7 3.8 volts. But this one here, yeah. And that puts in perspective um, what can happen with tool batteries that are high voltage. And also, you, th uh, you can think of electric vehicles, too, because electric vehicle batteries, they have a whole bunch of these 18650s in series. Now, electric vehicle batteries will have them, have them in uh, series parallel configurations where you have banks of cells in series that are parallel with each other. However, in this case, with this cobalt tool battery, which is made by Greenworks, um, if you're, in case you're wondering who actually manufactured the pack, now these cells... They might be Sanyo. I'm not sure. I know sometimes you can find Samsung cells in these packs, but I think this I think this one has Sanyo cells. But you see we had one go bad. And most likely what happened was over the course of last summer I had been using this battery and it seemed to work okay. I think I mentioned there were a couple of times where the charger rejected it, but it was, it's kind of weird. It would reject, reject it sometimes, but then other times it would not. It would charge it. But in this case, what happened, you had one cell go bad. And now, my in theory, this BMS board should, and I say that kind of loosely, should shut things down in the event of something going abnormal and that's kind of what happened today when I was trying to charge this thing that's why it refused to charge all together you can have one cell go bad in this whole pack and it ruins the whole pack um, I mean we have 19 perfectly good 18650s in here that I'm going to salvage and put to use somewhere else and these are good tool battery cells as well these are these are high discharge you could you could vape with these if you wanted to I don't actually have a e-cigarette but these um, they're ready for high discharge but yeah so this one cell uh, in theory I think what could have happened to it was it failed and um, it might have got over discharged or even worse, reverse charged, causing it to possibly heat up. Now, I don't see any signs of, like, the cell getting hot. Um, like, I don't see any bubbling of the cell wrap. But this cell did vent, meaning the pressure in it got high enough to pop the vent. Now... With these lithium ion cells, when they vent, they can vent with flame. Laptop batteries, particularly older laptop batteries using the ICR or lithium cobalt chemistry, those are the ones that are especially known to vent with flame. Now that doesn't necessarily mean at any time a cell like that vents is going to catch on fire and vent with flame. No, uh, matter of fact, I have disassembled a laptop battery before that had um, a cell that had vented. You could tell the cell had vented because there was electrolyte um, inside the battery. Well, it was it had happened a long time ago. In fact, what happened was the electrolyte caused the end of the cell to get corroded. So. This appears to have been kind of recent because I'm not seeing any signs of corrosion in here. But this thing, it made a mess in here. I mean, this right here is nice and wet. The BMS board is nice and wet. See, that's another thing that's concerning is the BMS board got wet. That could have caused a short. It's amazing this BMS board still worked at all. Now, I don't see any corrosion on any of the components of this BMS board. 
get you a closer look at it and get you a closer look at that cell that Venta again you can see the the wet insulator there what a mess but yes um, I think this showcases the safety aspect of the INR chemistry these might be IMR I, th I think they're INR and it's very important to have safe chemistry cells in a pack like this where you have a bunch of cells in series to create a high voltage again 20 cells in series so I mean there's a chance that the BMS could have failed and not shut this pack down before that one cell got severely over discharged or reverse charged causing it to vent like it did or there could have been something internal to the cell that caused it to, to actually vent like that who knows but yeah this is quite interesting so at least I have 19 uh, presumably 19 good tool rated cells to add to my collection so anyways that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching hey everybody thanks for watching this video from QCareer channel if this is your first time please subscribe to the channel and tick the bell so you get notified of a new video I post Please like this video if you enjoyed it, leave a comment, and share this video as well as the channel with your friends to get the word out. In addition, I have a second YouTube channel, that's QCompMTDX. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your support.